Girl, we still going through it. <laughs> Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Lady Nika in with this week's edition of our trending topics. You know, this is the video of the week where I come in and um I talk a little it while uh swallowing spit. That's what I do over here, you know, on on the on the Friday. That's what I do. So Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to all of my new subscribers. I appreciate you coming through and showing some love to your girl. I really do. Thank you all. And this week we're going to talk about some stuff that y'all have submitted to me. One of my thoughts and opinions on, you know. So I feel like while I had a free minute, I'll come on down and uh, give it to you. I apologize for my... Um, inconsistency this week um i don't share a lot of my life on these youtube streets for obvious reasons but i have been working really hard trying to prepare for my oldest daughter's wedding next week so until we get past next week child it'll be here and there i'll be here and there okay but don't think that i have forgotten about you i haven't i haven't forgotten about my channels and what i need to be doing but child this is an egg wedding, so you know I everything takes a, a a back seat to what's going on. Now I will be back doing my usual, you know, and I will be still trying to give y'all the reviews and the little talk times. I try to make sure I keep up with that next week. But if by some happenstance I go MIA. Just know that next week my daughter's getting married and I'm heavily involved in that and that's where my my thoughts and my my energy has been. I ain't, I've been down to the YouTube street, you know, supporting my peoples I like to fuck with, but I ain't just down here on the regular like I normally do. And, and that probably ain't going to change for another week or so. So, with that being said, let's get into this week's trending topics. Our favorite Female talk show host Wendy Williams admitted, um, as many as many of you may know already, that she has been living in a sober living house. She let the emotions flow as she uh, stated that she needed help, and she didn't say per se what addiction she was battling, but she did share that she needs help and she's getting the help she needs. She said nobody knew, not even her parents. Only person knew was Kevin her husband um she she went on to say that nobody knew because she was looking so glamorous girl that that you know okay but uh she said after filming and keeping her you know day-to-day -day appointments she's driven by a 24-hour sober coach to a sober living facility she and her husband also opened a hotline that helps people get help as well if you're battling addiction. That number is one eight 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 five hunter If you are out there battling any form of addiction and you are looking to uh, change that and live a more clean and sober lifestyle, uh, that hotline is now open for people who are looking to receive help. Again, it's one eight eight eight. Five Hunter. I will link that down. I'll put that in the description box so that you all can get it. And also, while I'm talking about this, down in that description box, you're gonna find out everything that everything about me that you need to do. You know, know about me or need to contact me. All my stuff is always in the description box. If you're trying to reach out to me, check the description box of any video, and you will find uh, a way down there to be able to contact me if you so need to off of YouTube, okay? Anyway, back to Wendy Williams. Uh, I said that, in my opinion, that's a good thing, and I'm glad she's getting the help that she needs, and she's trying to help others who's battling addiction, regardless of what that addiction is. But I also was a little bit... I was a little apprehensive. I was wondering in the book of my mind, why is Wendy being so forthcoming? That's not like her. She's sitting in that purple chair and she tell everybody else's business, but she never tell her own. So I was wondering what the hell got Wendy talking so, right? 
You know, I mean, shit, it's her right to tell people what she want to tell them. But if you hiding something as deep as what we all been hearing about over the last couple of months in relation to your husband, you said you, you really didn't want to be questioned to talk about that. Why would you open Pandora's box and talk about you living in this re, uh, sober living facility? I felt like that was just as personal as her relationship with her husband. But, child, the Daily Mail told us... Just mere hours after Wendy came and did her little show and told us about, you know, her living in a uh, sober living facility and all of that stuff. The Daily Mail dropped the tea, child. They came out with an article. Wendy, girl, you know that, that these folks was going to come for you. The Daily Mail been on your butt for quite some time. It's just the world we live in today, ma. But anyway, they say Wendy at the sober living facility due to alcohol and prescription drug abuse, allegedly. The Daily Mail said that it's all, uh, you know, the Daily Mail said that it's all alleged to me because child ain't got nothing for her to sue me for. So everything I'm saying is allegedly according to the article that came out from the Daily Mail. So let's get that understood right now. Now, they went on. To say that Wendy started pills and alcohol after fracturing her shoulder after an altercation with her alleged cheating husband. Uh, our, the Daily Mail also say that they had reached out to Wendy for a comment. And she came forth with her truth about her current living situation mere hours after they had reached out. They knew that. In other words, Wendy knew that this article was going to come out. So she tried to get ahead of it, spin the narrative in in the direction she wanted to go and in hopes that this article would not come out. But it came out anyway, child. Uh, I can understand why she did what she did, but girl, mm, I can't get mad at her, but she knew still that somebody was going to talk about it in detail. So, you know, apparently she has not been AMIA because of her Graves disease acting up on her. She was dealing with this pill and alcohol addiction. Now, I wasn't feeling how the Daily Mail was acting like Wendy Williams being at that particular facility that she in was not, you know, someplace you would expect to see a Wendy Williams because of who she is. In my opinion, addiction don't have a, a, a class. It don't have a face. It could be you. It could be me. It could be anybody. Thank God that it ain't us for those of us who is who is not uh, affected by an addiction to alcohol, drugs, or, you know, or prescription pain pills. Thank God. But it's nothing wrong with her being at that facility. If that's where she needs to be to get the help that she needs, then... It doesn't matter about the structure as long as what's going on inside is being a, a, a service to people who are battling with these addictions. That's the most important thing. See, I, child, it don't matter if it ain't the Betty Ford Center or Malibu Passages. Maybe that little place that she's in is the best place that she needs to be in to get the help that she needs. When to know what she doing. She not that you trust and believe she didn't leave her comfortable plush mansion uh, over in New Jersey to come to this sober living facility. I think they say in Long Island or somewhere like that. She didn't do that just for just to be doing it. She did this because this was a move that was going to help her. Now, they say it all started back in December when Wendy hired a P.I. to investigate her husband, who she felt was still seeing one Miss Sharina Hudson. Y'all remember Sharina did an exclusive back in 2017 with the Daily Mail admitting that she was involved with Wendy's husband, Kevin, and that it was ongoing. Wendy then confronted Kevin on why he was still seeing her. Well, damn, Wendy, he's seeing her because clearly they got a love thing going on, girl. And then it's being funded by you. But anyway, it's a real relationship in my eyes. When she allegedly, it's, that's when she supposed, uh, supposedly allegedly fell and fractured her shoulder. Then she had to wind up taking them pain pills because the fractured shoulder was giving her problems. It was hurting to, and she got addicted to that. Somehow along the way, she fell into this spiral of depression and she was medicating and drinking and it, pow it proved to be a powerful potion because Miss Wendy obviously got out of control with that, okay? Although her and Kevin is still allegedly together today, 
things are strange between them. Kevin is the one that lied and said that Wendy walked into a door and, and you know, he took her to the emergency room. He keep telling these uh, show execs over there, Wendy, that's what he was doing when she was out, that she was not returning due to health reason. It's also learned that she um, flew out to a detox rehab facility in Florida. So y'all, Wendy was forced to have to tell her truth, you know. <clears throat> and then Moti came out via the Daily Mail because they said when she was down to the detox, uh, detox rehab place, she was still drinking. Y'all remember that photo that had surfaced of her coming out of a CVS with the yellow shirt on and another woman? Apparently that is somebody who was at... Uh, the so uh, at the detox rehab facilitation of uh, facility facilitation girl i can't get my words together today but anyway that lady that was with her they both was at this facility together and i ain't saying that wendy bought no alcohol and beer but we know that it's sold over at the cvs and child they said why she was there she was still boozing she was getting people to sneak stuff in to her uh, Kevin flew to uh, Florida to visit his wife allegedly, and he took the mistress, Serena Hudson, with him. Serena would stay back at the hotel while he went to visit Wendy. She returned back to New York in February of this year and has been at that sober, sober living facility for a while. Kevin is still out here thotting and trotting, you know, and lying about how Wendy fell because questions were raised as to, you know, how did she actually fall? Um, my question is, why is she putting up with this? It's a mystery to me, family. And my thing is this. Wendy, you knew that for years you have sat in that purple chair and you have dished out everybody's tea that you can get your hands on. You are a celebrity too, so you had to have known that at some point people would dig up your information and would out you out too, ma'am. You knew that was coming. My question is, now that this is out, are you going to continue to stay with this man? Do you have an escape plan to get away from this man? Sometime for a peace of mind, it's worth that coin. And clearly, he don't have no respect for you because... You are the background and his foreground. You the reason why he got money. You the reason why it, he's got jobs, you know? Because he's your manager and he works on the show, right? So you the reason why he's able to do the things that he's able to do. And I'm not convinced that his money is as long as yours. So it's your money that's financing this relationship. So why are you doing it? This man has stressed you out to the point where your ass is over there down to the sober living facility. Because you got addicted to pain medications as well as alcohol trying to numb that what the Daily Mail had been putting out about your husband. That coupled with the fact that I believe that, that if you did hire a PR, PI, that person came back with all the tea, letting you know that your man was doing this. Why you putting up with that? You won't have that to do, girl. You really ain't got that to do, but okay. And he ain't shit anyway. Because has he ever stopped to think about, okay, you might not can stay in Wendy or want to cheat on Wendy or treat Wendy wrong. But what about y'all son? He ain't no little kid no more. He can go to Instagram. He can go to the shade room, TMZ. He can click links and stuff like that. He's fully aware of what you're doing. And for you to have such lack of respect for his feelings and to blatantly cheat on his mama in the public eye the way you're doing, have you ever thought about how that's making him feel? That make me know that you are an ancient type of person, honey, because nobody would take their kid through this willingly, and you're willingly doing this. If you love Serena, leave Wendy, even if that means that your money gets a little funny and your paper ain't right. Love is love, right? They say it conquer all, so it help you conquer them bills without Wendy. I just don't get it. He he really is something else. Now, y'all was down in my comments saying to me this week that you wanted me to speak about this person by the name of David Caesar. And uh, I was like, well, who the hell is David Caesar? Well, because when y'all speak, I'm like, you know, it's like Eve Hutton to me. I listen. I went over there and I went to doing a little research on Mr. Daniel Caesar. And I found that he wanted to know why black people are so mean to white people. And then when I read that little part there, I thought about it and said to myself, self, and myself said, hmm, why did the love things ask me to speak on such an ignorant ass person? 
um, little motherfucker. Maybe we are mad and a little mean to not all, but those who come against us because we cannot live our lives without the threat of the police being called on us for simplest of things like having a barbecue in a park. You know, things like that get the police called on us and stuff. Uh, this current administration has made a lot of people feel like they, they, they bold, they safe now to say the things to us African Americans that they may not have otherwise felt so free to say before because they feel like, you know, that wouldn't be politically correct. But when the President of the United States is sitting up there saying the things undercover that these people have always wanted to say, then... That kind of give you an idea as to why. See, you ignorant. He ignorant to me. Because you asking us why we got an issue with our oppressor. Still in 2019, I got to deal with people judging me for the color of my skin and not the content of my character. That is why some black people have zero tolerance for white folks. Now, it's some decent ones out there. Some of y'all on my page. I love you. But for those out there who are racist, I, I think they get there's a reason to have a little bit of an attitude and come for people. See, you obviously either you are very sheltered or you're ignorant or you're both. You know what I mean? Because to ask the question, why are black people so mean to white people? Well, why are white people so mean to black people? Why we got to be called N-words? Why we got to be treated like a lesser class of people when we are the people who built this country? See, I can't go about my day, day to day, especially in the South, without having to be reminded that I'm not just an American citizen, but I'm a black American citizen or African American, whatever you want to call it. Or I, uh, Adolf's. American descendant of slaves, if you didn't know. My ancestry leads back to slavery. So, I'm Adolf's, okay? So, that's why some black people have zero tolerance for white people. Because they have taken the, the white sheet off of their heads and exposed their face. And they still spewing and doing things to us as a people that is inhumane. And illegal oftentimes, but they're not held to carpet. Let me do something to one of them, though. See, I can tell he ain't got no good sense, or he's ignorant as hell, like I said, because to act, were you trying to just get some social media attention? Because you got it, they drug the hell out of your ass, and rightfully so. It's amazing what people would do these days for some type of attention. Because he ain't no different than none of the rest of us. He know damn well why black people tolerance for white folks at this time right now is so high. He know why tensions are high. So I'm only going to have to believe that he did this for some form of clout. And I'm trying to figure out what you want clout for. What do you want? Are you that bored in your everyday life and whatever it is you do? Because I didn't look him up. But are you that bored that you're going to ask a, black, a race of people why they are so mean to white people? You deserve to get drugged. And not they shouldn't have been dragging you on your aesthetics because that don't mean nothing. They should have uh, drugged your ass on the fact that I know that you're doing more. You, I know damn well you are aware of what's going on in this world. Even if all you follow is Instagram, the shade room, ball alert, and all of that. At some point in time, you done seen a story scroll across there. That's why. Child, I can't do no ignorant person. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I'm done with this. God bless his clueless, ignorant ass. Let's move. Jess Hilarious got drugged this week, too. Uh, she racially profiled a guy boarding a plane wearing a turban. They evacuated the plane, and then when the folks were allowed back on, those guys wearing the turban weren't on the plane. Folks came at her for that. She started cussing out everybody. Uh, she felt, say she felt threatened, honey, and pointed out the guys that she were feel, feeling threatened by weren't even on the plane anymore, okay? 
and went on to tell us that we gonna learn to listen with Je listen to Jess with the mess because her her stories are real. She attempted to apologize, saying that she's not racist uh, or prejudiced because she got Muslims in her family. Now, girl, when she said that, I was done with her then. Because ain't that the same thing that racist people say? I got a lot of black friends. They continue to drag her. And members from the Muslim and the Arab and the Sikh community all got with her and gave her some factuals. And she ended up coming back out again, this time a more dumbed down, uh, a more uh, mild manner. And almost, almost showed some emotions, whether they fake or real, she tried. She went on to apologize and tell us that, you know, these are her words. These ain't the words of some, some um, publicists, but these are the words that are coming out of her mouth because she wanted to let the world know that she was sorry. She was sniffling like she was about to cry, but not one tear fell. She apologized to the people and the folks that she wrote racially profiled. She apologized for not knowing that just a week ago over in New Zealand, um, uh, some maniac decided to, you know, go into a, two mosques over in New Zealand and shoot up the place, killing at, at the time that last time I read about it was 49 people. Could be more. Put it in the panel below if it is. And that she's going to be donating $15,000 to the families who were affected by the New Zealand shootings. I'm unimpressed. Not real life, I'm unimpressed with that. First of all, I never followed this girl anyway because she's a little bit on the ignorant side to me. And maybe it's because I'm aged. I don't find ignorance as, uh, you know, as entertaining as I once did. But I don't follow her. But this was just, she might not have, she conferred or consulted with a damn PR to come up with this. That's why they had her looking like that. That's how they always do when these celebrities do something that's the, or say something that they know that's going to garner them backlash that could affect their bottom line. They get online and they look all meek and, and, and humble and they want to issue apologies. And for some, that may be okay. But for me, you old enough to know better than to say that. Just because you love young, young does not give you an excuse to say something and be so ignorant. And then to let you know that you are truly an ignorant individual when you were called to carpet and people began to tell you why they was coming for your throat and why you should not do that, especially as a black woman in America. Instead of you listening, you decided to get online and do what most ignorant ass people do. You cussed out people. Ooh wee. I'm going to tell y'all about that, that so-called dragging people at the end of this video. But for right now, let's keep talking about this hoe. This girl here. So, what you did was okay to you. That's what I got out of it. This, this apology was weak to me. Because it only came because you want people to still purchase them tickets to go see you at these shows. It's not because you truly understand what you did and, and you're apologetic about it. It's because you were called out on your shit. So now you want to give us sympathy tears and issue these apologies and offer $15,000 of your coin to go over to the people who were affected in the New Zealand shootings. I can't do nothing with an insincere apology. Nothing. Nothing. I... I Y'all let me know what y'all think about her, honey. Uh, looks like Jareel Kelly Tears and Stop Stories has landed her a role as cast member on the upcoming a season of Growing Up Hip Hop Atlanta. Will you be watching? I had said I was just so I could drag her, but I ain't gonna drag her, girl. I, I, I left that along with Resume and her mama. I ain't, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time. But she gonna be on there if y'all wanna go over there and listen to her cry some more. And, and I'm trying to figure out growing up hip hop. Is her cheering gonna be on there? Because they the ones growing up. R&B. What's she on there for? Girl, if, if y'all don't see what she is, now I ain't, I ain't 100% convinced that the aura did everything people saying he doing. 
but I do believe something went on and it needs to be investigated and I'm all here for the trial. But what I ain't here for is this woman here. Girl, your stories have changed so many times. First, he was a good father. Then he was a not good father. He was a loving father. Now he ain't a loving father. One minute that he was on top of the child support and the money was coming in good, the minute that man fell out, girl, you ran to the first person that was willing to listen to them sob-ass tears and you gave a story. Now, had you been, had I felt like you was a victim, I would feel for you, girl, because I'm not here to victim blame. But I, I'm not quite convinced that you a victim. I think you might be a co-conspirator or was at one time. That's all alleged, though. Anyway, congrats to Portia Williams and Dennis McKinley on the birth of their baby girl today, delivered by C-section. As for the official name, it was still up in the air at the time of me starting this recording. But congrats anyway to Portia and Dennis on their bundle of joy. 90 Day Fiance star Ashley Marsden says that husband Jay Smith has been stepping up amidst her head health issues. Now, y'all know that Ashley got the lupus, right? And she been going through some things. Now, I guess because he don't want to lose his green card, he's starting to act like he know he's helping her around the house, taking the cheer in the school, cooking and cleaning. That's what she said. I see them on the 28th of April when the other half of uh, the happily ever after I talk about them then I was just dropping it there cuz that was tea there it is do with what you want to but like I said it, to me this is all a part of I don't trust none of them 90 day fiance stars because it was so much especially season 6 cast because see those people on season 6 got so damn dirty and retarded I almost left this franchise completely alone because it was so much stuff coming out I ain't never seen a reality show season in and and it's it's like tea never stops on these people it just never stops i'm used to reality stars where we get them for what um 12 13 weeks and then they cut their ass on and we threw with them and, and when we start hearing about them again that's when stuff start uh getting ready to go toward um coming back on that's when we like we hearing all this love and hip-hop atlanta stuff and i got a story in just a minute but we started hearing about these shows again when they about to come on. This cast ain't let go. Oh, no. Child, they held on, honey. They held on to us with feet and hands. I'm sick of them, okay? Now, since we talk about love and hip-hop, Child, Page Six, and TMZ reported that love and hip-hop Atlanta star Tommy Lee was arrested after she showed up to court drunk. The 34-year-old reality star was ordered to undergo drug and alcohol testing after she appeared to be drunk during a court appearance in Cobb County, Georgia. It was later learned that her blood alcohol concentration levels came back more than twice the legal limit, a violation of her bond, and she was arrested again. Girl, I told you, we can want help for her all we want to. We can see the greatness that lives inside of this woman all you want to. But until that woman see it for herself and see that she is more than she's becoming, we're going to keep bringing stories, myself and other vloggers on YouTube, about her downfalls because it's just going to keep happening. She has a problem, a deep-seated problem, and she's trying to numb her pain with alcohol to the point she has become addicted to it. That is my opinion. Till she want it, it ain't nothing you can do. Nothing. Now, before I get to my, this week's channel spotlight, I told y'all I wasn't going to hold y'all long. My channel spotlight, I wanted to say something uh, about some stuff. Now, let me let me tell y'all something. Uh, what would people be so scared and so upset about a, somebody, a, quote unquote, uh, dragging them? See, I'm old school. Wasn't no dragon. It's roast. It's gags. <coughs> it's playing the dozens. It's all of that. In this life, whether you know it or not, and whether they do it in your face or not, it's going to always be somebody that finds fault with you, and they are going to say something about you. Now, sometimes you will respond, and sometimes you won't. Y'all know it's customary for me to pay a bitch dust. 
Okay? I paid whole dusts. So, when it was brought to my attention that someone had stepped out yet again and mentioned the lady's name, I was like, who? So, when I found out who, because I didn't go watch the shit, I just got the cliff notes of it. I was like, oh, really? See, y'all, I can't get mad. I'm going to tell you why I can't get mad. My mama always said, when somebody come and tell you something, consider the fucking source of what, who, who or the person that's saying the shit. First of all, if a dog bring you a bone, he'll carry one. But this dog wasn't carrying no, wasn't taking no bones at this time. They just let me know. And when I got the cliff notes of what was being said, I laughed and I found out the source of the person, you know, the person that was saying it. I was like, really? <laughs> Girl. I'm sorry. I have gone through so much down here on the YouTube. Bitch, it, you... <laughs> I cannot, <laughs> in my Johnson voice, I cannot, girl, if you, you got to be, you can't be, girl, let people talk, I, it's only been one woman on the, on the YouTube streets that I ever, ever felt like was someone I needed to respond to, see, she mattered, she mattered today, love her to death now. But I can't be responding to every stray. I cannot. And I will not. Because I have a life beyond this YouTube thing. And I I don't care what people say about me. It's not what you say. It's what I answer to that counts. And considering the source of where that one came from. Girl, I can't even do it. I refuse to step down out of my chariot to slang tomatoes with a weak bitch. So, let people talk. Y'all new love things, y'all don't know the rule. The rule is, unless that shit is affecting my three Fs in life, which, which, which would be the feeding of me, the fucking of me, and the finances of me, financing of me. If that shit ain't being affected by that, let that person talk. Because we know what it is. Let that baby do what she got to do. Because I don't even know her. I just was respectful. And for that to jump out like that, then it let me know that what I had been hearing prior to was true. So I leave, I leave a person what it is. And that was not something that I would even much remotely get into it. I don't be for dollars, bitch. I don't have to. Either this channel gonna grow or it's not. I ain't finna do nothing crazy or extreme trying to make this channel grow. Because when you build your channel on drama, you gonna have to keep it on drama. I'm not a person that enjoys drama. I don't like drama because it affects my health and I like living and I love me. And two, I don't want my channel built off of drama because I don't want y'all feeling like that's what you gonna get all the time. And the minute I pull back on that, then I, I got to go back to it. See, that, that girl, that ain't how you do it but i let people do what they gotta do and say what they gotta say i don't have no problem with her because i don't know her ass to respond i only respond to shit i care about i don't give two fucks about that lady let her sit over there and do what she gotta do to get her clicks and views and super chats notice i don't go to i don't even go live so the coin ain't that goddamn serious because I will, i'm a natural born hustler i know how to make money even when i ain't on this hoe if this all you know, then that's what you're going to do. And if you insecure with yourself, you're going to go where the wind blow. I ain't insecure. I'm standing strong right here on my channel doing my thing. And I go where the fuck I want to go. So, that right there wasn't shit to me. I can't be bothered by nobody like that. So, y'all, please don't come tell me nothing. Especially if it's coming from... Girl, don't give me no weak bitch. I'm a strong hoe and I always have been. I don't even know how to respond to a weak bitch. All I can do is pray for you and hope you learn one day how to stand on your own two feet and not on the backs of others. Now, that's all I have to say about that shit. Now, as always, every week I do me old nasty piece of channel spotlight. You know, I, I get in my car 
in the words of Miss No Edges. And I peruse the YouTube streets. And in between all of the drama and the mess that be going on, I, I do find channels that I like. And I did not know one of my own love things, been one A1 since day one, was actually on YouTube and had a channel. And I found it. And child, I went out when she gave it to me, I went over there and Reels Tutty Talk was something I like. Not only is she a very beautiful woman, she has a beautiful spirit about herself, y'all. She does uh, reality, she does reviews, she does story times, and because people keep asking her questions because it may look like on this camera that she's a white woman, she's, also, she's very black. She's a black woman. So she broke down her ancestry DNA over there. So I'm, I, you know, I know everybody ain't drama field. I know y'all ain't because a lot of y'all been with me for a minute and y'all don't like that shit. I don't mind a little drama every now and again because we all got a little mess in us. But see, sometimes when I come on YouTube, I don't want to hear no mess. I don't want to hear no drama. I want to be... I want to be entertained, and I want to see something that's positive. Somebody that I don't want to hear somebody getting called B's and H's all damn day long because of motherfucker and they feels. I don't want to do that all the time. Sometimes I want to go somewhere where it's peaceful, and real tutty talk is exactly that. She takes you away from the drama, and you get to enjoy her commentary, and she interacts with you down in her, um, her comment section. Um, I just, I like her channel, and I will link her down below in the description box for you guys to go over and check her out, and if you like what you see, go ahead on and subscribe to her channel. She don't do that YouTube drama. And it's a lot of people on YouTube who don't, that watch YouTube that don't want it. They don't even want to see a little bit of it. Some people got enough hell in their real life. When they come to social media or these platforms that we have, they don't want to hit all that extra shit. That's the reason why I don't give it to y'all like that. Now, I do like to watch me old nasty read every now and again, but bitch, I'm not here for that. I'm about living, loving, educating, and keeping it going. Hashtag women's empowerment, okay? I ain't got time to be dealing with, you know, the scum of the earth. I ain't got time to be dealing with people with mental issues. I ain't got time to be dealing with motherfuckers with self-esteem issues. I ain't got time. I want to go to somewhere where I can enjoy myself and, and, you know, and have a good time and get my ass on by my business. That's what I want. And that is the experience that you will get on every one of my uh, channels that I have told you guys about, starting with AMSR Renee. Y'all check her out. Remember, the E's are turned like threes. Check out The Real Birdie. And check out uh, Real's Tutty Talk. You will find that those are channels where you can woo saw and laugh and, and have a nice time. Have a nice viewing experience. It ain't going to be all of that cussing and acting like you crazy over there on them channels. So I'm going to link Rhea down there. I hope you guys go over and check her out. And if you like what you see just like I did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. You can even let her know that Lady Nika sent you over there. Honey, I'm still in the business of giving back because I'll never get so big on these YouTube that I'm going to remember. Even if I don't care for the people that did, once upon a time, somebody shouted me out and it helped me start my channel up. And because that happened for me, I believe in passing it on. I pay it forward. And that's what I'm doing. That's it. That's all, y'all, on this edition of, you know, our trending topic show. I got to be real careful what I say, you know, because they be coming for me, child, on these damn videos. They be age-restricted me and everything else. This might get age-restricted, but that's okay. Because like I said, when I can't make a Google, I can make... I'm, I'm in... I'm, I got a girl multifaceted. I can make a coin when this here go off. Okay? And until a bitch can do that, then I ain't got... I, I can't, girl. I can't. I can't. Okay. Anyway, that's it. That's all, y'all. Get down in the panel section. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about the topics discussed below. I hope you all have a wonderful uh, weekend. I hope you get out. If the sun has come out in your area as it has mine, get out and get you some vitamin D. And uh, both kinds, both kinds, both kinds. Get you some vitamin D and 
and enjoy yourself and let and live your best good life girl you it's only a small window of time between the day you born and the day you die what you gonna do in the middle that depends on you me i'm gonna be trying to live my best good life that's what i'm gonna be doing and if you don't want to join me in that child and that's you but don't try to deter what i got going on because don't do it honey that's it the death of your struggle will determine the height of your success. In the meantime, in between time, please remember to rate the video. Rating to me recognized on these YT streets, honey. Comment down below in the panic section. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on the topics discussed. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already for the free 99. Hitting your notification bell button so that each and every time that I drop a pre-recorded video or do an impromptu live, you will be notified and you can come over and join in the conversation that always commences in the panic section. Y'all have a great weekend. I will see y'all next week. Peace.